Um, and then, of course, the other sort of key area where, where someone like myself perhaps is, is, is needling away so that people like yourselves can take up and pressurize on these matters. Political funding. Um, I, I, did, I did a story last night where we looked at how um, something I've been involved in for some time, which is um, concerns about unknown, one political party secretly funding past another political party. Um, something that was denied for a very long time. Um, the association between the parties was also denied. Um, now you have a clear conflict of interest where it has emerged that um, at least 2.5 million just before the last election went from an unknown official via cash into the bank account of the past um, political party and, and, and then was used to fund a record number of deposits on seats for past to run. To, to, to fight. Now, that is a conflict of interest between two parties. And unless you have proper transparency in political funding, which is one of the things I think that you must prioritize to fight for, transparency in political funding, uh, you know, these, these conflicts of interest, political conflicts of interest, are going to thrive. Um, and um, I think that's one thing I would like to, to remind everyone that hand in glove with conflict of interest is lack of transparency. Um, and um, people will know that it doesn't look good if it's discovered that uh, you know, certain people are benefiting from every decision made by the decision makers who are supposed to be there to serve the people. Um, and so they, they keep it under wraps. And, and really where I started on this whole investigation into Malaysian corruption and plan to return and go forward on is, is corruption in, in one area which is East Malaysia, Sarawak. And really you couldn't have a better, more horrifying example of a combination of what Wong Chen was talking about, which is um, excess concentration of power. You, you, have, you have had a chief minister there, and he still controls the state economically, um, who was the chief minister, planning resources minister, um, and economics minister, controlled well over half the budget in the same way that your prime minister can be economics minister. Um, did just before the election. Over concentration of power, um, conflict of interest in decision making, what did he use that power for? He used it to distribute all the contracts, all the concessions, all the bounties of government um, into the hands of his own family or front companies or cronies who were supporting his political, ongoing political power. Um, and how did he cover all this up? Lack of transparency. I was able to expose a lot of these um, self-interested decisions that were made by this little clique of people family who were controlling Sarawak purely by getting something that shouldn't be in a public document that wasn't, the land register. By looking at the land register, I was able to see what companies had been handed originally the contracts and concessions uh, that were being given out by the time of the Sarawak state government. And the answer was that the original company is nearly always associated with his family. By the time the, the, the concession became public, those, com the, you know, those companies would have often mm -hmm. sold on those concessions to other bigger companies and it would not be known that there was a big fat intermediary transaction that went on. So, so these sorts of things need to be addressed. I'm confident we will tackle them, Cynthia and your team and all of you here. And I know you have um, guidance from amazing experts like Terence Gomez, who is written an amazing book about um, of, of old, and um, you know, I will be one person who's watching because my final point on this is, um, you know, we in the West have just as much to learn, um, and we, we, we have had a, a, our lack of um, awareness of what was going on, the complicity of um, our institutions and the international finance system in facilitating what was going on is, is a major part of the problem that Malaysia has to fight to, to get out of. And, and, and I'll leave you with one story that's in the international press today, which is looking at the potential conflict of interest of the new regulator um, in Australia of, of financial institutions. He's now under fire, I think rightly so, uh, by newspapers in Australia who are pointing out that he was um, head of compliance at Goldman Sachs uh, during the period of Ron MDB, uh, failed to spot that um, 
slight uh, you know, um, issue of, of, of those bonds that um, took so much money from Malaysia. Um, and he's now the person who's in charge of failing to um, investigate ANZ Bank and its own role in the 1MDB scandal. So, um, you know, this is somewhere for where Malaysia is not alone to be branded on these issues. And in fact, I think you're going to teach us an awful lot by your new awareness. So thanks, thanks for giving me a space in your agenda, but I know I've got to give you time now, so um, I've had both my time. Thank you.